Hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Tech, where we are here on Terra Firma to test drive some quads. So let's go ahead and run this flashpoint. Fantastic. We already did the initial briefing last episode, so we're just going to hop right on in here. And what do we have available here? We're going to have a Xanthos, a Goliath, a second Goliath, and a third Goliath. These are all different variants of the Goliath. And I think instead of the boar's head, I think we're going to bring the bull shark for our artillery mech. And we're going to be able to bring a full second lance. So that's a good thing, in my opinion. We obviously want to bring the salamander. I think that that's a clear choice. And then I think in place of the awesome and the battle master, we're probably going to be ending up bringing... Picking the corsair for kind of long range fire support. And maybe even the Orion for that dual LRM-20. That, it, it's, it's very effective. There's no doubt about that. I think that's what we're going to end up bringing there for our bipedal mechs. We're going to need mech warriors for each of these, obviously. Here's a salamander pilot. Fantastic. And what do we have for cold fire? Hmm, not helpful. Not helpful. Nope. 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 <laughs> and nope. That seems a little strange, but okay. We'll put Brother into the Bull Shark, and then the Corsair and the Orion. It feels like we definitely should have had some affinities for those, but apparently not. Oh, this is why. We have our mech warriors in these. For some reason, I was assuming that these were Comstar mech warriors. They are not. Okay, so in that case, we're going to have Taboo in the Corsair. Well, probably not, actually. Uh, Succubus in the Bull Shark. You guys can get out of there. There we go. Succubus in the Bull Shark. And then we'll, we'll have Rain. We didn't have in anything. Let's just go from the beginning here. Boot Camp in the Salamander. So all we need now is a Corsair and an Orion pilot. The others don't matter. We're not going to have affinities. So let's just find a Corsair and an Orion pilot here, hopefully. Orion. Perfect. Coma in the Orion. And then Corsair. Panzer, maybe? Yeah, Panzer. Perfect. Okay, these can be just kind of random mech warriors. We're going to put Poet in because she needs XP. In fact, anyone who needs XP is who we're going to bring here. Poet, we're going to bring Taboo. We're going to bring Chronic Toast and Muffin Top. Okay, so this is a one skull mission. We're not expecting difficulties here. We're only allowed to drop four units. Okay, I wish it told me that before we were ready to go, if I'm honest. <laughs> I really wish it told me that before we were ready to go. Because when you're in here, the only thing it tells you is that it requires both a unit and a pilot. And yeah, we can only drop four. Let's do this. These are the mechs that we're going to bring, or rather the mech warriors. They need XP. That was a bit of a waste of time. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. A little sad about that one, but you know, it is what it is. Honestly, I kind of feel like... I get why certain flashpoints restrict you to four mechs for difficulty and balancing reasons, but I kind of feel like they should just ramp up the difficulty and allow us to drop all of the mechs that we have unlocked. Because there's generally not story reasons for why you can only drop one dropship worth of mechs, right? I mean, technically you have a second dropship, and th sometimes there are good reasons for that, but there's not in, like, this one. Where we just need to destroy the local government patrols. We've arranged a training mission on this planet. Of course, we did not inform the local government we would be using their forces as training dummies. Now, it does bear noting that this is intended to be a test drive of quad mechs. So kind of fair enough that they don't want us deploying bipedal mechs. But at least give us a story reason. This should be extremely painful. We'll see. It's only a one skull difficulty, so we will uh, we'll determine that for ourselves, I guess. Painful for us or them? Not sure. I have no idea what the loadout on these quads online. is like. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Excellent. So we'll go ahead and begin this mission, although I'm going to wait for this frame rate to smooth out, and hopefully, there we go. Once that happens, that should be all of our materials finished loading. Command interface. 
Interface initiated. In theory. So we immediately see an enemy contact. Commander, you're entering the, the area that the data indicated the lances were patrolling. That's confirmed, Commander. I'm seeing hostile mechs just on the other side of that ridge. Watch for flanking actions around the right side. I'm also seeing engine signatures off to the left. Enemy mechs moving up through forest cover. Clear out those patrols, Commander, while I assemble a briefing on our next targets. Good luck. Sumire, I don't know what you're on about. I don't see a ridge, and I don't see forests either. Unless you're calling this forest? Oh boy, that's some thick fog. Okay. Kind of hard to see. Confirmed. The Goliath is going to go ahead and move forward. We see a Gauss rifle, dual ER medium lasers, and dual LRM-10s on the Goliath. And we can fire on... Oh, these are also enemy quads. Okay. Cool. Just checking these hit odds. This is round one, so they're not going to be great. Our best hit odds are going to be on this Goliath. I really should have reserved. But let's go ahead and see. Oof. <laughs> Five points of damage. Okay. So there's some enemies out over there. We're going to go ahead and reserve at this point. The quads move very, very slowly. Is that Snow Fox a quad? Yep, it is. Okay. Aye, aye. Okay, so our Xanthos is able to fire on that Snow Fox, but it probably has a good number of ev evasive. Actually, only three. I'm going to continue to reserve, though. Affirmative. Okay. The enemy Goliath moves up. Shoots at our Goliath. Not very effective, if I'm honest. Not very effective at all. I'm here. Now, we have another Goliath here. I'm going to be a little bit loath to move him right now, I feel like. Mostly because I want to allow these two to move. So we'll do that. Enemy Goliath moves up, shoots at our Goliath. Misses its Gauss. And that's great. Reporting. Serious armor loss. Did somebody get hit by that Gauss? I don't think so. Ooh, a quad with jump jets. Okay. The fog is mostly only where the camera is at. At the ground, it's a lot more clear, which is awkward for us, for sure. For sure. We're going to move up with our Xanthos here, and we'll fire on whatever we have the highest hit odds on, honestly. 18.8, 29.2. Excellent. We'll go. Yeah, we're, we're not going to get a hit there. That's not surprising. It's round one, and there's quite a bit of fog. And Commander? I mean, these mechs are kind of awful, if I'm honest. <laughs> we're going to move up with our Goliath, and we will fire on 31.5 is probably our best hit odds. Yep, indeed. We'll go ahead and boost those a bit with Warlord and see if we get any damage Premier. dealt here. We hit with the PPC as well as a number of missiles there, so that's good. Hey. This Goliath is also going to move forward. And I'm guessing that these are intended to be played largely as juggernauts. Just inexorably creeping forward. There we go. Okay. I'm picking up a new sensor trace. Looks like enemy reinforcements. Is that in addition? That's just the two patrols, right? I think so. We've got the Ripper over there. That's not that big of a deal. Confirmed. For now, we're going to move forward with our Goliath. We're going to want to keep these guys a little more spread Location out if we confirmed. can, but we're kind of in a choke point here. So I think we'll fire on their Goliath here. This is the best hit odds that we've got. We don't have Warlord available. Fire it. I'm wondering... Are the legs mixed together on quads? Like, are the two legs considered one location for the purpose of Rogue Tech rules? On each side. I don't know. We'll have to uh, do some experimentation with that. It might be that it's not possible with the Battletech code base to mod in the... Uh, 
A peak house. Okay. It might be possible, not possible with the rogue tech uh, code base to mod in extra body, or rather extra torso locations or leg locations. You know, damage locations. That's the term I'm looking for. Th that might be an engineering challenge. I'm not by. sure. But we're going to go ahead and proceed forward here with our Xanthos. And we would love to continue to hit this Goliath. Unfortunately, our range is not great. And so this is all we've got. PPC, it looks like to the CT there. Yeah, that Goliath is definitely getting lower. We're going to move on forward with our 1A. Now, this guy's got an AC-20 on it. We can't quite hit that yet, but we can keep hitting that Goliath. Now, I would expect a quad mech to be much harder to knock over than a bipedal mech. But that stability is going up there. Maybe it's not possible to knock over a quad mech. We'll have to see. So there Goliath comes forward. That's a 2H. Running a PPC, and those honestly look like rockets, not missiles. Okay. I'm taking heavy hits, Commander. I don't like how this is going. Yeah, those are rockets. Cool. This guy jumps, fires on our Xanthos, misses everything. I love it. That's fantastic. I'm receiving you. We're going to move forward with our longer range Goliath here. Yeah, I know we're kind of clustered together here, and I'm not super happy about it. We're going to continue to hit their Goliath. We're hoping for at least a knockdown here, or to see what happens when you roll a knockdown on these things. Okay, so that quad is definitely getting knocked down. Interesting. That didn't feel like it was particularly harder to knock down a quad. Although it should be. It definitely should be. <laughs> The Goliath moves up and fires on our Goliath. Oh, gets a structure exposure with that heavy gauss. 120 Stop, points. Like, that was like, actually, I think, 150 I'm points armor. to a single location. I'm losing armor bad. Yeah, that's going to be a thing. But we don't actually care about these mechs, necessarily. Ooh, okay. That's a problem. Took a hard hit there. Yes, you did. I'm losing armor left and right. So, this is our Gauss Rifle mech, and we're going to move up to about here. Move order received. Now, we could fire on their Goliath, CT, or we could fire on this Ripper. We're going to fire on the Goliath for now. I want that heavy Gauss Rifle off the field. I'm on them. Not really the crits I was looking for there. I mean, these loadouts are crappy, right? <laughs> but that's not quite what we were looking for. I did want to check. Okay, that's in this arm. What's in that arm? Absolutely nothing. Ah, right. They don't have arms. They have front legs. That's the way it works with quads. Got it. So there's absolutely nothing in this leg. Snow Fox moves up. Fires at our Goliath. Gets some internal there. One more shot like that, and I'm dead. I disagree. Right here. The Goliath is going to move up. We want to protect the right side here. So we're going to turn kind of like this. Note how the quad turret doesn't really take into account facing. That's interesting. Roger that. We can still fire on that Ripper if we wanted to. But I want that Goliath off the field. I'll fire. Is that a knockdown again? Ejection. Okay, that'll work. Okay. Awaiting orders. The Xanthos is going to come forward. I do like that the facing doesn't really matter. We'd like to protect the left side this time. So we're going to move the, the, Xanth the Xanthos forward here. I would love to go after this Ripper. Odds are not fantastic on it. Are they better elsewhere? A little bit. But I think we'll just fire on the Ripper for right now and see what we get. Affirmative. Well, we can't really see what happens there, but it looks like we shredded off a little armor. Their Goliath comes forward. Fires on our weakened Goliath, but doesn't really get very much done, though. There. That's not a lot at all. Waiting for orders. 
Okay, this guy is going to come on forward. Location confirmed. Not great hit odds on the helicopter there. And this guy is out of LOS. So I think the Snow Fox is actually the one to go for here. He does are not great, but that's okay. Honestly, we don't need to hit that Snow Fox very much to get through that armor. So that'll be fine for now. This Treburuna will come forward. In fact, it'll continue jumping. Oh, okay. It's got a heavy gauss as well. It didn't break through the armor with it. But it's definitely got a heavy gauss on there. Actually, improved HGR. Some sort of a fancy rifle. Also, look how it has double armor over what it's supposed to have. That's interesting. Feels awkward. That thing is very heavily armored, actually. 280... Very strange. The Ripper is going to head up on top of that building and not fire. I like it. This is going to be the Snow Fox moving. Let's see what it wants to do. Anything, Mr. Snow Fox? I really don't like the loadout on our quads, to be fair. It's not that I don't like quads. Quads are, I think, funny. But, in fact, there's some good reasons to use quads, I think, right now, based on what I'm seeing here. But, what I don't like is the loadout on these mechs. We'll, we'll change that when we get our own, for sure. These, these stock loadouts, not great. We're going to walk forward here with our Goliath. And we would love to hit one of these guys. In fact... We have good hit odds on all of them. We're going to go for the Trevoruna because it's got that HGR. That is definitely the highest threat weapon on the field right now. Let's get that out of here if we can. We could even Warlord this to imp improve clustering on this side arc. Here we go. It's now unsteady. It moves phase seven, so we may have a chance here. We're going to move up with our Xanthos, which has taken quite a lot of damage. And we're going to fire on this. Unfortunately, we're definitely going to be having some heat issues. Maybe if we don't fire the ERPPC, yeah. Fire everything else, this should net a knockdown on the Trevor room. Yes. Beautiful. Panic level critical. That's a big deal. Yes, Commander. Our Goliath is going to step forward over here. We're going to continue focusing that Trevoruna. Now, do we know where that ballistic weapon is? I feel like we don't. We should probably just go for this torso since it's the more wounded one. Confirmed. Ooh, we missed the PPC outright on 92%. That's gross, actually. Absolutely disgusting. So the machine gun Pegasus is closing in. That's fine. Our Goliath is going to come on in over this way. We've got that AC-20. And that we're absolutely going to fire at the Trevoruna. A solid hit there. We didn't pierce the armor. Although with that thing being at like double what the armor is supposed to be, I'm not surprised about that. Mostly I'm not liking the loadout of these. I feel like they have a better loadout than we do with the heavy gausses. I know this isn't technically a heavy gauss on this thing, but it's fundamentally the same thing. So it jumps and fires on the Goliath. Ooh, right into that weak arc. That hit something important. That was unlucky. Right into the location that had previously been hit. Uh, fortunately for us, there is nothing in there, and we get to see what happens when a quad is legged. How much slower it moves and such. So the Ripper moves up. That's fine. Our Goliath is going to step forward over here. And we're going to continue hitting this Trevoruna, I think. Actually, hit odds are a bit better out on the Snow Fox. And there's also the Ripper behind us. But I think that the Snow Fox is the one to go for here. Lock it off with all oh, yeah. 
that's a leg destruction there. Also notice that we didn't get knocked down with only the single leg destruction. Did the snow fox... Pilot incapacitated. Did we take down two legs there? We may have taken down two legs to get that knocked down. Which would make sense. I'm receiving you. Okay, so this is our kind of long-ish range Goliath here. We're going to step forward, Position but I'm confirmed. interested in seeing... Yeah, I didn't expect great hit odds on the on the Trevoruna there. I expected slightly better on the Ripper, but I guess we're super far away. So we'll fire out on this Goliath for right now. It doesn't have much left in terms of weapon systems, but we can start shredding its armor a little bit. Yes, okay, Commander. now this Goliath is going to step here. I'm going to Vigilance it to reduce the uh, stability. And this is really, really bad hit odds. Weapon damaged. Okay, fair enough. Target move plus six. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll alert it to boost that a bit. And at the very least, that'll make it unsteady. Pegasus machine gun comes on up. That's not a huge threat. Unless it gives more of those head hits. Standing by. Our Xanthos is, of course, wanting to make it into the water here. We could actually jump it to here. And Flipping that feels off. like a good move. Jump it into the water. And now these hit odds aren't amazing here. But let's see what we get. Not a ton, but that's okay. So that's all of our moves for this round. Their Goliath is going to pull back a bit, fire on our Goliath, and hit a PPC, as well as a few LRMs. I definitely feel like they have the better weapon systems here. Not to mention the numerical advantage. The Trevoruna jumps and fires on our Goliath. It does get a structure exposure with its PPC, but the rifle straight up misses. So that's the Gauss Rifle and LRM-10 in that torso. That's not great, but it's not the worst. The Ripper moves up, rear attacks that same Goliath. Very rude. We do need to deal with that thing. Oh boy, heavy hit there. Okay. Getting banged up real this is our AC-20 Goliath. It's going to walk up here. I'll try. And we're going to fire on that Trevoruna, but the hit odds are garbage. Absolute garbage. Wow. I mean, we've got a refire for sure. Target move plus six. All we need to do is hit it with one thing. To get it unstable. Wait, it didn't become unstable from that? It definitely should have. Hang on. It definitely should have. Okay. There's something else out there that we don't really know about, but that's probably okay. Reporting. Minimal damage. Orders. So this Goliath really needs to protect its right side. So we're just going to have it position like this. Order yeah, we're kind of turning rear arc here. And I'm not super okay with that. We could go for their Goliath or for, for the Trevoruna. And do we want to hot load this? We could easily hot load this and do quite a lot of damage to this Trevoruna. Let's do it. That wasn't as much damage as I was hoping for, but that is a knockdown. That's the second knockdown on the Trevoruna. Okay. Health one of three. This is going to be that Pegasus. Okay, that out there, that's not a quad at all. That's some sort of a mech. Watch the flank. Yeah, we knew that they'd be attacking the rear arc, but honestly, that didn't do very much. Armor holding. So we're okay with that. Ready okay. For orders. This Goliath... I would kind of like it to step out over this way. I would love to go for that Ripper, but we just don't have the hit odds. Let's see about taking out this Trevoruna. 
confirmed. Solid connection on that one. There appears to be a machine gun constantly firing now. Oh boy, that's yes, going to be man. vaguely annoying. Hopefully that stops or maybe I can just mute that. I don't know. That's very obnoxious. We're going to move the Xanthos over here. I want the Ripper gone. Actually, no, we just can't get rid of it. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Firing all weapons. Okay, we're going to fire on the Trevor Runa here. Uh, stray shotting a bit here, but... Reporting critical hit. Uh, yeah, that's Can really annoying. As soon as we get a chance, we're going to do something about that. That's the CT exposure on the Xanthos. Got a weapon system down. Yep, the Trevoruna gets up. Okay, that's enough of this. We're going into the settings, audio, and for right now, I hate to do it. There. Hot damn, let's do this. So much better. So we're not going to have those sound effects for a bit. But I think that's better than having that machine gun constantly going off. So, what happened over here? We know that the, well, the Ripper's moving again. Yeah, I think that these mechs are just very poorly designed. In, not in terms of, like, the fact that they're quad. Just in terms of the fact that they don't have good weapon systems. <laughs> We're going to move up with this Goliath. We still need to try to protect the right-hand side. I got you. And I would love to fire on the Trevoruna here. We're still hot loading. We're not going to do that anymore. I'm on him. Okay. That's a kill. The Trevor Runa is down. Next up is going to be the PPC Goliath over here. Now, we don't know what mech this is. That's a Vindicator. Okay. For now, let's move up here, and I want to eliminate their Goliath as quickly as possible. We've already done a decent chunk of damage to it. And that was another decent chunk. Sounds good to me. These are some garbage weapon systems, so I said that a lot, I know. But it bears repeating because it's super true. Long range shot from the Vindicator on the Goliath. Serious shit here, Commander. It's okay. Right here. So, this is our LRM AC-20, Goliath. Is this in range of the AC-20? The answer is yes. And so. we are going to see if we can Warlord it. We can't. But even so, let's hit this Goliath as hard as we can. For an alpha strike. We did manage to hit that AC-20. It's a big deal. The Goliath moves up. Fires on our Goliath. Does a lot there, ah, a actually. Got a weapon out. That's a whole lot. I mean, with the structure exposures that we've got, we're not super shocked about that. Uh, we lost most of our weaponry on this Goliath. Was that just in that torso? I think so. Pegasus running around a bit. Our Xanthos is going to close in over this way and continue to fire on the Goliath. Hit odds aren't the best, and we do end up missing. It was 70%, so we had decent hit odds, negative actually. Damage. Repeat, negative damage. Yeah, I just think that these weapon systems are bad. I don't think that the mechs themselves are fundamentally flawed. In fact, the fact that you can face them whatever direction you want and still fire is really powerful. I just think that the loadouts that they've given these mechs, like the default loadouts, not good. The enemies definitely had better loadouts than us. Confirm. But we're going to continue to close in with this Goliath here. Actually, we're not, I think. Um, these weapon systems are really awkward. I guess we'll position like there and vigilance it. It's not great. Oh, I didn't even look at the heat. That's a problem. Failed shutdown override. Yeah, I should have looked at that. That's for sure. The Xanthos, I want it to come over this way and deal with that Ripper once and for all. And this is the best we can do, and that's actually a hit with the ERPPC, so that's a dead ripper. Fantastic. Come on, people, let's make it happen. 
But these are some really, really crappy loadouts. So this Goliath is going to continue to proceed up over this way. We're really hoping that we don't stray shot the AC-20. And to that end, I'm just not going to fire it. Because I think that we are going to stray shot it, in all honesty. Let's fire our dual LRM-10s, which are, in my opinion, a waste of weight. We got a structure exposure on the Goliath, though, so that's okay, I guess. Vindicator closes in a bit. It fires on our shutdown Goliath, unsurprising. Only gets five damage, though. Cool. Commander. And this Goliath here, I would love for it to continue to close in, but I think that's too close for the LRMs. Yeah, this is the better position here. And we're just going to roll up some nice crits here. Hopefully we'll get something good. Hopefully we'll kill the thing. That would be ideal. Uh, we could actually fire our machine guns in X6 mode. And I think that's for the best. Locking in all weapon systems. We got some good engine crits Locking there. Heavy damage. And I guess that'll have to do. The Pegasus closes in a bit, doesn't do anything of note. Now the Goliath moves, it's going to fire on our shutdown mech. Absolutely. There was no way it wasn't going to do that. Engine destruction. That's unlucky. He got a crit there. Chronic Toast is fine though, so no big deal there. Like I said, this is primarily due to, well, two things, really. One, they have stock armor amounts, which is, in my opinion, very bad. And two, their weapon systems are... Not very weight efficient at all. Uh, uh, well, that's rude. Under, They've got coolant pods on there, too. Right. Very, very dumb. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to step over to, like, here. Yeah, that'll have to work. It's not great. But we're going to continue hitting on this weak side of the Goliath here. Locking on. We missed our PPC, and we had good, good odds on that, but we did manage to take down that Goliath. So that's great. Now, this Goliath here, we're going to just step over here. Moving to position. And we're going to go ahead and fire on this Pegasus. We don't necessarily expect to kill here, but let's see what we get. If we hit the AC-20, which we didn't, then we could have expected to kill. The Xanthos, we need to protect the right-hand side, so we'll just position it something kind of like this. Give them a side arc to hit. This is a pretty weak side arc, though. We need to keep that in mind. So that's definitely a thing. Uh, do they? Are there any additional coolant pods on here? Not really. Okay. We're not going to fire this medium pulse laser for heat purposes, but let's Engage fire on that target. Pegasus. Not great with PPC. Hitting that building. Sad. Okay. Orders. So the Goliath here is going to turn around and we're going to continue to hit the Pegasus. We do think that this could potentially result in a kill at this point. We'll see. That is a hit with the PPC and most of those missiles, but it's all armor. It spread out quite a lot there. Imagine if we had weapon systems. We'd be doing very well with weapon systems. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I'm not going to consider, like, a standard PPC and dual LRM-10s to be a, a, a solid loadout. I'm just not. Under any circumstances. The Goliath moves up. We're not going to fire the AC-20 just because of hit odds. But we will fire the LRM-10. And this could theoretically kill, but it's going to spread out a bunch. Yeah. There's another unit out there. That we don't know about. Awaiting orders. Interesting. Once again, we want to protect our right hand side. Confirmed. And we're gonna fire on the Pegasus here. We're not gonna fire the ERPPC. Our heat is in a kind of bad state since we took that crit. But let's Firing just go ahead and fire target. the rest of this, see what we get. Not a whole lot. Just additional armor damage into the Pegasus. Okay. The Pegasus moves up, fires on our Xanthos. Just 20 damage into armor there. That's not too bad. Vindicator fires on our Xanthos as well. 
Barely gets any damage. I like it. Light damage. Holding firm. Okay. So that's the Vindicator and the Pegasus. There is something else out there, though. Yes, Commander. But we don't know what it is. We're going to step forward with our Goliath. We would love to see the kill on the Pegasus here. We're going to Warlord for it. And this is Side Arc. There isn't exactly a side, a, a strong side on this Pegasus. Here we go. But these are LRM 10s we're talking about. So, like, seriously, though, a hundred ton mech with a PPC and dual yep. LRM 10s. That is just bad. <laughs> That's a bad loadout, objectively. I don't know. We'll Locked take the pot target. shot. We miss the PPC. LRM's hitting. We haven't pierced that armor yet. Yes, Commander. The Xanthos is going to continue to close in. Moving to position. And we could fire the ER PPC here, but too much heat. I think we'll not fire like this, but maybe we do fire the ER PPC. No. Has to be Look just up. the medium pulses. Just a little armor damage into the Pegasus there. What else is out there? The Pegasus moves through the fire, takes some damage, but doesn't do anything. Yeah, it's a phase 17 that we don't know about. Standing by. Interesting. So Goliath is going to continue to close in over here, and we're just going to lob some indirect LRMs onto the Pegasus here. It does have an exposed structure now, and we did get an LRM into that. Hit, Commander. But only one. Pegasus continues to move away. I'm ready. Our other Goliath is going to close in over here and continue to lob LRMs into this Pegasus. Target confirmed. That was a lot of internal. Surely that kills. Critical hit, Commander. No? Oh, wow. So much spread. <laughs> the Vindicator fires on the Xanthos. Unsurprising, but doesn't do very much. Okay, so our Xanthos is going to close in over here. And all we can fire on is that Vindicator. We're definitely going to fire the ERPPC here. Taking the shot. Okay. Not quite the hits we were hoping for there, but the Vindicator is now unsteady. Commander? The Goliath is going to close in over here. Roger that. And I would love to continue firing on that Vindicator. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We are running out of LRM ammo. Because these things also don't have much ammo. <laughs> that Vindicator has taken a lot of damage there. And it does get to move now. Fires on our Xanthos. Gets a decent chunk of damage in. I have to say the stock loadouts are very underwhelming for their weight class. We're going to move this Goliath over to here and continue to fire on that Vindicator. But the AC-20 is just too out of range. Locking in target. Some decent hits on that Vindicator, though. Commander. So that's not bad. We're going to keep closing in with our Xanthos, like Copy so. That. And this would cause a small overheat, but I think we're okay with that. Right? Right. Roger that. PPC, straight up missing again. We're getting some very bad rolls on those. My mech is overheating. Okay, the Pegasus moves up over this way, fires on the Goliath with direct fire. Okay, so we can probably easily take that out. We still don't know what that other vehicle is out there. Or mech. There's definitely something. By. If you say so. Two phase 16 movers. These are both of them. Okay, let's see if we can just eliminate this Pegasus. We're going to run out of LRM ammo here. Locking in target. Only one missile going into the Pegasus. Hit, okay. Man. We just can't hit that thing. The Vindicator jumps, fires on the Xanthos, gets some internal damage. Medium pulse laser destruction. If we're going to run these sorts of mechs, we really need to refit them desperately. These stock loadouts, they are not going to do. Aye, aye. So the Xanthos is going to continue to close in over here. Moving out. And at this point, hit odds are really bad across the board. Confirmed. But all we need to do is hit it with one thing, in theory, and it becomes unsteady. 
Not sure if it actually did there, though. We're going to move up with this Goliath. We've only got a little bit left for our LRMs. That's definitely going to make the Vindicator unsteady. I'm out of LRMs. Wait, it didn't? The Vindicator jumps again. Fires at the Goliath. Okay. Taking some heavy damage. Yeah. Commander. Well, the Xanthos is going to close in, I think, over here. And honestly, it doesn't matter how we face with the Xanthos anymore. We could fire the ERPPC like this. And hopefully we get a hit. Target confirmed. We did, actually. That might be a knockdown. There we go. That's a knockdown of the Vindicator. Yes, Commander. Okay, so the Goliath needs to sprint forward. <laughs> There's not very far it can go. It is very slow. Of course, it's lacking a leg, so it. that's fair enough. This Goliath is going to head on in, and we're going to fire everything we've got here straight into that CT. We want to fire the PPC first to open up potential Locked crits. We missed the PPC on 86%. Yikes. That's an urban mech out there. Okay. An urban mech could actually theoretically do a lot of damage to us. The Vindicator manages to get up right away. Very rude. It has basically no armor left. Fires on our Goliath gets four damage out. I'm under heavy fire. These mechs are so terribly lit loaded out. <laughs> Like, it's absolutely awful. Copy that. The ERPPC could go here or here. Hit odds are actually the same. And we're just going to take this. We miss the ERPPC yet again. I mean, I get that it's 51% odds, a lot but <laughs> we're missing a on lot. <laughs> so we're going to continue to fire on this Vindicator. Once again, we're just trying to strip off Target the armor. Fired. And there we go. Hopefully we can get some hits with the machine guns now that we have Standing some by. exposed structure. We're going to sprint forward with this Goliath. Of course, it has no weapons left other than the AC-20. Once again, some very, very crappy loadouts. Just an AC-20 and two LRM-10s. I don't think that's good for a 100-ton mech. I really, Goodbye. really don't. So we're going to step forward with our Goliath here. Affirmative. All we've got left for the Goliath at this point is the PPC and the machine guns, which are currently jammed. We're going to pot shot the PPC, and we miss it on 72% because of course we do. That's just how this mission is going. <laughs> the Pegasus closes in a bit, fires on the Xanthos. It also has a lot of misses there, to be fair. Losing armor. I don't think you were. I don't think any of those hit you. The Vindicator moves through the fire. Fires on the Xanthos. That does do some damage, but all to armor. Taking minimal damage. Okay. Yes, Commander. So the Goliath can now walk in over here. All it has is this AC-20, and it's only got four shots left. I honestly feel like we can't fire that. Awaiting orders. The Xanthos is going to close in over this way. Moving out. And we're going to fire on the Vindicator, not with the PPC, but with everything else. Affirmative. We're mostly looking for crits here, or opening up more opportunities for crits. That did hit all armor there. Oh, hello. The Pegasus is, is gone. That's nice. The Vindicator backs off, fires at our braced Goliath. Interesting choice. Right here. And our braced Goliath can now close in. 27% hit odds on the AC-20 means I'm not interested in firing it. The urban mech jumps on top of a building that is irrelevant. Waiting for it still can't see us. We're going to close in here with the Vindicator a little bit. I want to be, like, here. Rolling. And let's see what happens. We're looking for crits. That's some crits. Target's taking a critical Beautiful. Hit. Yes, Commander. The Xanthos is also going to close in. Confirmed. And I would love to fire the ERPPC here. Do it. Firing on target. We once again miss the ERPPC on good hit odds. Wow. <laughs> Watch my heat. We're getting some terrible rolls combined with these are just terrible mechs. They could be good. Locking target. Once we get some work done on them. Enemy down. But for now, Commander. absolute yikes. Xanthos is going to move through the fire and brace. 
and the Goliath is going to work on heading forward over here. Now, how can we get access to that urban mech? That's a long walk if the urban mech doesn't want to give us LOS. And it really doesn't. I think we're actually best off shooting down this building. Yes, Commander. We're not going to use the Goliath for that. I can tell you that right now. Copy. Orders? This Goliath might be okay. We'll just fire the PPC Engaging and take down that building. That Don't should give us track. LOS on this Irby. Aye, aye. Yes, our Xanthos can position here. We've still got some blocked LOS from this building, but that should be okay. We can actually fire on this building, but I'm going to fire on the Irby directly here. I'm not going to fire the ER small laser for Engaging heat purposes. Target. Once again, missing everything. Not super surprising, though, I suppose. No joke. Watch my heat levels. We'll see what this guy wants to do. I'm ready. So the Goliath is going to pop over to here, where we've got unobstructed LOS. Firm. And we've actually got some pretty good hit odds here. So let's take those. Engaging target. Excellent. Standing by. The Xanthos is going to continue to close in. And we're definitely concerned about heat, Target so we'll confirmed. just fire like so. Some 16 damage to the Irby. Right here. And the Goliath is going to need to continue to close in, but there's not a whole right lot there. it can do. Okay, so that's a PPC variant Irby. PPC and tag. Sounds good. He also didn't move. He did shoot twice in a row. Armor breach. Internal damage. Okay. I guess that must have been like reservations or something. So our Goliath is going to move up over here. We're not in range. The Xanthos is actually in a perfectly good position right now, I think. I wouldn't mind closing in a little more. This is in fire, though, and the Xanthos has some heat issues. So all we're going to do is fire like so. That's 10 damage there. Okay. I'm receiving you. Now, the Goliath is, I think, in a perfectly fine position. Firing on target. Nice. Structure exposure, double heat sink destruction. Critical hit. I like it. Standing God, these by. mechs are bad. We get to move twice in a row here, Got and that's commander. great. We miss the PPC the second time. Yes, commander. Sadly. The Goliath can position Moving here, position. and now we have a 21.7% chance on the AC-20. I'll roll it. Copy. We missed. Not shocked Double about that, but I'm a little sad. We'll see what it decides to do. Fires on the Xanthos. Okay. Commander, I'm hit. Yep. That's not shocking. Awaiting orders. Okay. The Xanthos is going to close in over on here to get rid of some of that instability. And we're going to continue to fire on that Urban Max side arc. Nice. So that's a snub nose PPC gone. The Urban Mech has very little left. Target's taken a critical hit. This shouldn't have taken this long, if I'm honest. Right <laughs> These here. mechs are garbage for their weight. We'll fire the AC-20 and miss. Bad luck. Mm, I'm not going to call that bad luck. Ready for orders. I'm more going to call that these mechs are poorly set up. Taking the shot. There's another PPC into that CT. As well as a machine gun shot. Yes, I like it. The Xanthos is going to potentially finish the job here, but we need to not fire the ERPPC, which is actually kind of bad. This might be better. Oh, we missed the PPC. Of course we did. <laughs> we got an engine crit and a head hit there. I guess that's okay. Over the red line. Really? Yeah. Failed a shutdown override at that heat? Wow. That's insane. Like, look at that heat level. It's barely over the line. Nutty. Okay. Well, the Goliath is going to step up and hopefully finish the job. Emphasis on hopefully. Yeah, 27% miss is not hugely surprising. And Taboo, please finish the job for us. Thank you. This should be it. There we go. So the loadout on these quads is awful. That's the last of them, Commander. We're in control of the area, and we can begin planning our next move. 
I'll have a briefing for you all on the available targets once you're back aboard your ship. Mission successful. Now it's going to give us a debrief. I should have split this into two episodes. I really should have. I really didn't think it would take that long. I underestimated how bad those weapon systems were at the beginning. I really, really did. And I mean, they had a lot better of weapon systems than we did as well. But that's okay. Lesson learned. We didn't lose any pilots. That's the important thing. We can grab some Goliath salvages. And what are the loadout or the hard points on that? Kind of bad, honestly. Kind of bad here, too. And ultimately, I feel like that's kind of the trade-off. We're going to take the heavy Gauss rifle. And we're going to take the improved HGR. Both of them use heavy Gauss ammo. So we need to see if there's any heavy Gauss ammo in here. Yes. Four tons worth. Fantastic. I like it. Rocket 10s. We'll get rid of those. Small lasers. We'll get rid of those. Beagle probe. We've got one. Engine core 180. We've got one. Double heat sink kits. We've got four of them. And we did get the other heavy Gauss ammo. So, I mean, in terms of weapon systems, we came out of that pretty well, if I'm honest. The heavy Gauss will be handy for us. Improved HGR stands for improved heavy Gauss rifle, doesn't it? I'm an idiot. How did I just now see that? <laughs> okay, well, let's get this debrief done. Once that is done then I'll definitely be putting a cut in here. We are well past time for that. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And let's see what they've got to say. I kind of hope that it's a briefing for next mission and not a debriefing for this one, but I don't think that's how it works. Oh, okay. Just test drive two. Sounds good. Let's get out of here. <laughs> I'll see you all next time.